Hey, what's going on everybody? Thank you for joining me for another episode of In The Word. Uh, my name is Trevor Pope, and uh, today I want to talk to you uh, from a, a familiar, for many of you, a familiar passage of scripture, uh, Luke 15, and we're going to be starting at that 11th verse. Um, this is the story of the prodigal son. You know, it talks a lot about God's forgiveness. It talks a lot about us being children and walking away from a father's love. But, you know, as we read this story, and, and or as I I was reading the story um, I felt like sharing this with you guys uh, especially you that have children like I have children um, especially teenage children I, th I thought that there was some nuggets that we can grab from here on how you know the father handled this situation and we all know that uh, well we maybe not all know but this is Jesus that is telling this parable and I just thought it was so many beautiful points in there that you know we can all kind of just eat on and, 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 you know, just meditate on and, and possibly use, you know, if we are facing a similar situation or, or if we're going through something with our children, especially our teenage children. But Luke 15 and 11, and once again, this is Jesus telling a parable. The verse starts off saying, and he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. So just to give you some understanding, if you don't know the story, what's going on here is the younger son comes to the father and he says, listen, I know there is an inheritance for me when you pass away. He said, listen, you, you, I, obviously you're right in front of me, you're not dead, but you know what? I can't wait until you die to get my inheritance. I would like to have my inheritance now. So right there we see that this young man is out of order. You know, he's definitely um, not thinking he's being disrespectful to his father. But the Bible goes on to say, Jesus goes on to say, but the father not only gives him his inheritance, but he also gives it to his brother. So right there we see some awesome parenting from this father because he doesn't show favoritism. He says, listen, your brother's not asking for this, you know, but I'm going to give him his as well. And the story goes on to say, and not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. So we see here that obviously he must have already had a plan. He must have already had in his mind what it was he wanted to do once he got his money. And a lot of us that have children, especially teenage children, and some of these things are going to apply to smaller children, but especially teenage children, you know, they get to a point where they feel like, listen, I already have this thing figured out. I already know what it is that I want to do and that I'm going to do when I'm big enough to do so or when I hit that 18 year old stage or whatever have you. So he's, he's already you know had some type of plan because it says not even days after he's already taken the journey into a far country and there wasted in his substance with riotous living so it says that he gets to this far country and and wasted his substance with riotous living the word riotous means to run wild act without restraint control or discipline luxuriant or profuse so immediately he gets there and he he has this wild type of life he's living this wild lifestyle why because this is something that he has not experienced um the bible said that he took all he took everything he had so listen he had all of his money at his disposal he doesn't have any guidance anybody showing him what he should be doing with that money and he's just running wild the word luxuriant means to live in great luxury characterized by richness and extravagance often tending to excess so he's living in, in excess why one of the reasons is because he brought everything with him that he owned uh, the word profuse means giving or pouring for freely generously often to excess the word excess is too much lack of moderation and temperance remember we've been talking the last few videos about temperance and temperance over indulgence um, the word prodigal means implies such reckless extravagance as to suggest eventual impoverishment and and look what the story goes on to say it says um and uh, and when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. So 
we saw what the definition of prodigal was and implies such reckless extravagance as to suggest eventual impoverishment. And this is what this young man is experiencing now. So it says, after he's spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, just, just like what happens in life. As soon as you've spent all of it, you've gotten rid of the resources that you have, now all of a sudden all of these different things hit you, which a lot of times, you know, the the younger generation, they don't understand because they have not lived it. You know, you try to guide and lead them. You try to talk to them about, you know, the different things that you may be experiencing as an adult. But now that he's out and about and he's experiencing it, it's taken him for a ride. It says, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him into his fields to feed swine. So now he's have he, he has to tie himself to somebody and do something that... You know, if he had never left home, he would not have had to do. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat. That word fain there means to be satisfied, to be glad. He would have been glad to fill his belly with the husk that the swine or the pigs did eat. And no man gave unto him. So the way things are looking... His, the plan that he had is not going the way that he intended. Now he's in a, in, a, in a strange place. He's in want. Nobody's giving anything to him. Nobody's messing with him. And it goes on to say, and when he came to himself, he said, how many higher servants of my father's have bread enough to spare and I perish with hunger? So he finally comes to himself and said, listen, I had it better when I was at home. Matter of fact, there's there's servants that are working for my father that are, are living better than I am right now. He says, I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. So now he is finally coming to his senses. Everything is hit them and guess what just like with our children you know when they make you know these decisions that uh were premature decisions or decisions that they weren't ready to you know to to walk in eventually they will come to themselves and prayerfully they will do like this young man did you know humble himself and say listen let me go to my father and say listen i messed up verse 19 says and he goes on to say, and am no worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. So verse 20 tells us what he does. It says, and he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. That word compassion here means deep sympathy or pity. So it says his father sees him from afar off and he has a deep sympathy and pity for him. And one of the things that I wanted you guys to catch that his father did not do that most parents would have done as soon as they saw their child is I told you so if you would have listened to me this would not have happened but we see here that the father does not do this instead he has sympathy on him he has pity on him he does he goes and grabs him lets him know how much he loves him kisses him he doesn't immediately throw anything in his face of what he has done and how he did not Listen, and the verse goes on to say, and the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven. So this is this is him saying what he had rehearsed. I have sinned against seven uh, against heaven, excuse me, and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. So he's saying to his father, listen, I'm not even worthy to be called thy son. Look at what the next verse says. But the father said to his servants, that word but there means however, in spite of. So in spite of what he was talking, however he was talking, it says, but the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe. And put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fat of calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found and they begin to be merry. And what I thought was so beautiful about this story is that in spite of all the wrongs that he did, in spite of the decision that he had made, in spite of the way he had disrespected his father by coming and asking for his inheritance, even though his father was not dead, when he finally came to his senses and came back home, 
the first thing his father did was show compassion to him. He did not throw in his face what he did. He, you know, he and, and, and that next verse when he says, but um, he said to his servants, it was showing us that this was another opportunity for him to address that. And he did not. And sh instead, he chose to show compassion. And it doesn't mean that you know that what they what he did wasn't wrong but what he was trying to say was listen listen i love you you know i'm glad that you're back and a lot of times we don't need to throw these things up in our children faces because if they're coming back and humbling themselves and saying that i'm sorry then they, obviously they know that they have done wrong so i just wanted to encourage you guys you know to love them let them go and let god because a lot of times you know you know, our children are making these decisions and they're doing things and we're constantly talking to them. We're constantly trying to stop them. And sometimes we just got to allow them to go through certain processes and, and really pray and ask God to keep them, lead them and guide them and help them come to their senses. But I wanted to encourage you guys to listen. Once you feel that it's gotten to the point where it's out of your hands, let God, let God do the heavy lifting. Because a lot of times, you know, we can keep saying things and keep doing things where we are getting in the way now. We are discouraging them more when we think we're helping them, but you know, we're just kind of beating them over the head when God is saying, listen, just move out of the way and let me handle this. If anybody know how to get them back to their senses, it's me. So I just wanted to encourage you guys with that. Just let you know, listen, love them, let go and let God. Listen, he's not going to let you down. Just continue to um, just continue to keep them in prayer. That's the same thing my mother did for me when I started ripping and running. And I found scriptures in my old dresser when I went back to her house that she had written and the church had given her that she was standing on. And look at me today, preaching the gospel, save, set free and deliver. Listen, guys, be encouraged. I love you guys. And until the next time, shalom.